Hi everyone, Tristan here with SUV RVing, and on this channel I focus on using an SUV as a little mini adventure vehicle, as an RV to go on adventures, and, and I show my own adventures, but I also like to cover other people's rigs, uh, show their setups in their SUVs, and so that's what we have for you today. I'm here with John. He has a 2016 Toyota 4Runner, and he has a really unique setup. It's a very stealthy setup, but it's also very off-road capable. He has a YouTube channel called Minimalist Overlander. He has an Instagram account by the same name. I'll put links to those in the description. There's his rig over there. Now let's turn it over to John for the full tour. Hey Tristan, thanks for uh, letting me showcase my uh, vehicle. I'm very excited about this build. This is a uh, 2016 Toyota 4Runner, and when I was building out a vehicle to travel in, uh, pretty much half the year. I wanted something that I could, number one, sleep inside, and number two, didn't limit me from where I could go. Uh, if I'm driving down the road and I see a beach, I want to be able to go out on it. If I see a really cool road going up a mountain, I want to be able to go there. If I see a great campsite on the other side of a stream, I want to be able to drive through that stream. The other thing is I wanted to be able to camp uh, in the middle of a city or a town uh, I'm basically touring all around the United States and uh, I didn't want any limits for where I could go. So I call this a Stealth Overlander. It's as well equipped as a Jeep Rubicon and on the inside it's as comfortable as uh, any hotel room or your room at home. In your house you have uh, about three feet of space above your bed that you need in order to get into your bed and you need about three feet wide of space for your mattress and then you need at least 74 inches long for a standard twin. So I went around and measured all the Jeeps, all the midsize SUVs, and the Forerunner is the only one that gave me all of that space. So this, believe it or not, is an eight inch spring mattress with a two inch foam topper. This is the most comfortable mattress I've ever slept on in my life, and it just so happens to be in my Forerunner. It's crazy. I realized being in the, the mattress that I didn't need a 36 or 38 inch wide mattress. I really only used about 30 inches. So I found this on Amazon. I think it was under a hundred bucks and uh, slid it right in here and it's perfect. You can see it's right on the ground of the, of the Forerunner and I have that three feet of space for me to get in here very easily and crawl around. And by going with a smaller mattress, I was able to open up this whole corridor here and I've got my storage containers, my Jackery battery, and an electric refrigerator. So you can see that the bed is sitting right on the floor of the Forerunner. So what I did is I took out the back seats and I'll show you the platform that I made. This is a very simple platform. It's just made out of half of a sheet of maybe half inch plywood. I bolted it into where the seats bolted into the car and then these screws go to a couple of feet underneath and underneath here there's some other screw parts from the from where the seats used to be in the car and they hold a little mechanism that I can turn like this and it pulls the front of the platform tight so this doesn't wiggle doesn't move and underneath it there's just a little bit of space, right? Maybe, maybe two inches, but this is where I have my electrical stuff running for my USB hubs that I put in. I don't know if you can see them here. These are little USB hubs I put in all around the car, and they will charge up my fans and my TV and my little fairy lights and my phone and anything else I can think of. So when I'm not using the gas tanks on the back of the car, I clean them out, air them out, and then I put them in here so that when I'm stealth camping in a city or the suburbs, uh, the outside of the car looks as boring as possible. So on this vehicle, I have 200 watts of solar, I have a Jackery uh, 500, and I power my fridge, my fans, my phone, and uh, a bunch of other things without using the car battery or the car electrical system. So these are Renogy 100 panels, 100 watt panels. And as you can see, they're built right into the roof line of the vehicle. 
there's little runners on a forerunner on these little uh, rails on the forerunner and I just put a little L bracket here L bracket there and uh, attach them with screws and the nice thing about this setup is I can go through a regular car wash without having to break anything down uh, or worry about this flying off in the wind or anything and I got the one the two 100 panels because these panels are flat and so I need all of the gathering sun gathering power uh, surface I can get I use the uh, solar to run an electric cooler this is an Apricool G22. It holds about a week's worth of food for me. When I'm on the road, I eat vegan and I eat mostly raw, but I have my breakfast and my lunch in there and I like to break everything out into these uh, food prep containers so I don't have to uh, think that much when it comes time to cook meals. I use a lot of sauces for flavoring so I don't have to carry a lot of spices and things with me. And everything is uh, sugar-free oil-free and salt-free. And as a luxury for when you're out in the desert, I have ice. How cool is that? I use L brackets to hold the freezer in place. And even though it's not strapped in or anything, I've never had it uh, come loose on the back roads. And I paint everything in the car black so it all blends in. So the solar panel powers the Jackery 500. And then from this Jackery, I power the electric cooler, the fans, the iPad, my phone over there when I'm sleeping at night, and anything else I want to charge up. Everything that you use in this vehicle, like a flashlight, a fire starter, everything you'd use in this vehicle that has a battery is USB chargeable. And so it all charges off of the Jackery using the sun's power. So I'm pretty proud of this. This is, uh, I've never seen this in a Forerunner before. I call this an interior roof rack. Um, it's made out of 80-20 extruded aluminum and it's bolted into the bolts that were used for back here there was a hook and then up here is where you'd have the handle for the car. So I just took those things out and I just screwed this thing right in and it is strong on it i put anything i want i put my fairy lights at night i put my fans up here i put my phone up here at night i put my uh, ipad and i have all these places for for mounts so if i want to shoot a gopro video of me driving i can put it right here it's a great innovation very simple to make I believe anybody can do this. So the company where this aluminum comes from is called 8020 Inc. I think. I think it's a Maryland based company or Pennsylvania. And they have an enormous catalog of attachment gizmos and things. Uh, very easy. It's not the cheapest thing in the world, but you can make anything out of it. And uh, the aluminum is so soft you can literally cut this with either a little hand saw or I actually cut it with a wood blade on my chop saw. <laughs> Crazy but it worked. It's very finely finished and there's no sharp edges. And it has all these tracks in it so you can just move things where you need them at any time, adjust and away you go. Ballpark figure for how much this cost probably under $500, maybe $300. Um, but the functionality you get, right? So you take a fan, you put it up here, you plug it into the wall, and the fan is always there. Every night you get in, you can adjust this to cool your feet off, you can put it on your face, you can chill your body if it's hot. It's really wonderful. So the electrical in cars uh, or in your Overlander can be intimidating. And I didn't want to use a lot of brain power to figure that out. So all I did is I put in these little USB ports. It's very simple. You get them from Amazon. They have a uh, screw on the back, so you drill the appropriate size hole. You put this in. It has the wire built into it on the back side, and you just screw on the uh, plastic nut that comes with it, and now you've got this port in your car. You then run the wire over to a, uh, a hub, a USB hub, and you run the hub wire to your Jackery. I didn't do any math. 
and I have electrical all throughout the car. So I've got them everywhere. I've got a little one here, a little one there. I've got a little one down here. And of course I've got them where my fans are and where my iPad is. So my fans and my iPad are always charged up and ready to go. There's no setup in the evening. I just get in, I've got my heating and cooling going, and I've got my movies and entertainment. I didn't want to drill any holes in my roof when I was setting up for the solar. So I noticed that there was a little teeny thing here, and you might have something, a bump like that, on your, la on your hood. So I just ran one of the wires down here, right? positive or negative, I can't remember which one. It went into this roof because I noticed there were these little holes. And I think a lot of cars have these little holes all over the place. This is hollow. I ran into this thing, and this thing runs down into the roof right here. And then you can just get your wire right there. I ran that down through the car underneath the bed and over to my Jackery. And that was it, solar set up, very simple. Okay, in the back of my car I have these little hooks. Just got them at a Home Depot. And I just put my fruit bags up there, cut a little hole in it, and now I've got a safe, secure place to put my fruit. I have one on this side and one on the other side. I'm a minimalist when it comes to clothing. I like to have one outfit that I'm wearing and maybe one or two outfits in reserve. So instead of doing a big build out with wood and all that complicated stuff, I just use automotive Velcro to hold these little pouches on the wall. So my clothing is up, away from the mattress and the living area, and I have underwear here, I have socks here, and over there I've got my t-shirt. So in the morning I can just grab the things that I need, I get dressed fully inside the rig, and then I slide out the back and I'm ready to go. One of the great things about a forerunner is that you have this wonderful latch back here and a window that moves, but there's no indoor latch to open this door. Well, somebody made a runaround for that. So from inside the car, I can open the back window. Or I can unlock the hatch, just kick it with my feet, and I slide out. On the back hatch of the Forerunner, you have these lights built in. And there's a person that makes a little runaround that allows you to have the red lights at night for to maintain your night vision. How slick is that? Let me show you guys how I prepare a meal on the road. I meal prep all my food by buying it frozen and already pre-cut. Under here, I keep an Epicurean cutting board, and there's my kitchen. I have a nice flat surface to work on. If I want to warm this up, I use one of these things that truckers use. It's called a Hot Logic Mini. It's basically a glass container with a heating pad that gets up to 170 degrees. That's hot enough to cook meat to well done. So all I do is put my packaged food in here and whatever protein I want with it. I pour in a little sauce, zip it all up, pull out the cord, and on a forerunner, there's a 110 outlet back here. So I just plug it in, and then I go off driving for the days in the mountains, in the valleys, wherever I want, and at lunchtime, I open this up, and I've got a warm lunch ready to go. I eat my big meal at lunch and then I graze for dinner. I do my laundry every day. I know that sounds crazy, but look at how simple it is. Fill this with a little bit of water. Take my earth-friendly detergent, put a little bit in. I get all of my laundry, which is usually just a pair of socks and one pair of underwear. Wash it, do -do -do. dump, clean water, rinse. And then, the great thing about a Forerunner is you have this window in the back that can slide down. And so I put my laundry right here like that on these clips that I have in my ceiling rack. I open up my front windows, go for a 20-minute drive, everything is dry. Fold it up, 
put it away, and my clothes are clean for another day. I try to use wool socks because they're antimicrobial, and even when they're wet, they're warm. They don't smell when you've worn them for a long time, and for some reason, in a forerunner, your feet are always warm. So these are brilliant. Okay, so I use felt containers to store things so it's quiet when I'm in the, on the back roads. And in here I just throw a bunch of stuff. So I have one bowl that I use for eating and I have one spoon that I keep up front for everything. I have general cleanup, laundry cleaning, and then this is what I use instead of toilet paper. It's a bidet. You just fill it with water, warm or cold, and you squirt this, you clean yourself, and you don't have to deal with toilet paper. In here I keep a whole bunch of little things. So this is extra food that I can grab during the day. I like to use canned beans that have a lid like this so I don't have to search for a can opener. And then when I'm done eating this, I have a little lid that I can put on it. So I'll throw this back in, I put the lid on it, I throw it back in here, and when I fill up with gas, I throw out my trash. So I don't need a trash -a or anything like that. And then this is just a hold-all for everything <laughs> that I'm working on. Most of my uh, coffee is done with little Via instant coffees from Starbucks. They have a whole bunch of flavors. It's fantastic. So all I do is warm water. And this guy it takes about five minutes with the car running and it just plugs right in to the back of the uh, forerunner. And then I put in the Via and I have fresh coffee. If I'm in a group with a bunch of people driving, uh, I use a GMRS radio. I don't have this set up yet because this was a Christmas gift, but uh, it's a very simple mechanism. All the controls are in the handset. So you just put this little part under your seat, plug it in, I believe, to a lighter, and then you can run everything just from the handset itself. Very simple. And I think the transmission is like three to four miles or longer than that. And there's an antenna that goes on the roof with a magnet. In this pouch back here, I keep more long-term storage. So I've got my bear spray, uh, a hammock, an extra trowel for digging cat holes, and uh, miscellaneous stuff that I'm working with. This is probably for my drone. And then I usually cover it all with my bits and pieces of extra clothing. In my center console, I have a vault. This thing is rock hard. It's bolted into the car from the inside of the vault. It's made by a company called Locker Down. Great thing about this, is that it's huge and I can keep my drone controller, my drone batteries, and my drone right in here. How cool is that? And then I keep passport, money, and my little satellite locator, right? And when I'm in a city roaming around, I know that all of my possessions are safe in my car from a smash and grab. This is a third party product. You can see the fit and finish is immaculate. I think these are around $400, but what price safety? I try to keep the Forerunner looking as stock as possible up front so that when I'm camping in a city or a suburban area and you look in, you don't see anything. So under here, this is a uh, photo uh, cloth. It's non-reflective, so at night this looks, just looks like a shadow. And this is where I keep my water. Six gallons of water. It's low in the vehicle, so was, my center of gravity is kept low. The other cool thing is uh, in the glove box, I have an organizer. This is a aftermarket. I think somebody just made it. And I'll keep my razor in here, my electric razor. So while I'm driving, I can just shave and do that routine. And then in the door, I keep my toothbrush. So I can do that routine. 
but you need toothpaste, right? And toothpaste is messy. You have to spit it out and it dribbles down your front. So I found this company. And these are, this is edible toothpaste. It's like a mint. You chew it up in your mouth, don't swallow it. You brush your teeth, and then when you're done, you swallow. And in order to clean my toothbrush, I just take my water. <laughs> I put it in. And this goes back in my door. If I'm driving down the road, and I see an elk off in the distance, I have my little Nikon viewfinders right here, binoculars, right in my door. If it's dark and I'm jumping out, I have these little flashlights. These are USB chargeable. It's got a front light and it's got this light. I keep one in every door, right there. What's great about these lights is they articulate in a million different directions and they've got a magnet on the back. So if I'm changing a tire, I just put that there, it lights up this whole area, as bright as daylight. If I come to a camp at night, lights up the whole neighborhood. <laughs> it's amazing. And then when I'm done, I go like this, and I'm back to looking like a stock forerunner. So you'll notice on the outside of the vehicle, I have these wind shades. I can lower my window to about here. And then on the inside of the vehicle, I made this screen that insert for the windows. It's just half inch by maybe eighth inch aluminum that I got at Home Depot. And I just manually bent it to the shape of the car. Then I used a little L bracket here with some kind of glue. And then with a hot glue gun, I just stretched the, the uh, screen over the frame. And it stays in place with these little rare earth magnets, super strong magnets. So I can lower the window and I can get fresh breeze blowing in the car at night. I utilize all the spaces in the door. I've got the little flashlight here. I've got a place for my glasses at night. I've got a towel to clean my glasses. I have my trash bags that are biodegradable for my toilet. And then if I'm sleeping in a Walmart parking lot, I've got eye shades. So it doesn't matter how bright it is in my car. So I'm 57 years old and a little bit heavy. And so I'm not gonna be squatting out in the wild to go to the bathroom. So I have a nice little fold up toilet here. I just keep it right alongside the door. And all I do is take it out like this, dig a cat hole, put this over it. I can do my business right in there. If I'm in a place with other people, I could just take one of these bags Put it down here. It's an eight gallon bag. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be <laughs> creating that much waste, but there it is. This is a fire extinguisher. It's made from a French company called Element. It works on all four fires. It's a solid state material and it's equivalent to one of those huge fire extinguishers. You just pull off the bottom, you take off the top, you strike it and this powder comes out. It doesn't ruin the fabric of your car. It won't hurt your electrical system. And it has no expiration date. I keep one here in the front so I can jump out and grab it. And I keep another one right back here where I'm sleeping. One of the coolest things that I keep in my front door is this thing. It's called a dime and it's made by Gerber. It's one of those million and one devices. 
This is the real McCoy. It's just teeny weeny. And it's got scissors and knives and anything you want. And it's right in my front door. I put a little bit of Velcro on it and a little bit of Velcro here. So when I'm bombing around on the dirt roads, it doesn't move. And it's right there where you want it. I wear glasses. And so I needed a place to put them that was handy up front. And this is where the hand hold used to be for the car. And this is just a little aftermarket company that makes a place for your glasses. Super convenient. I keep my driving glasses here and my reading glasses here. This is where I keep my first aid kit. This is not actually a first aid kit. It's a trauma kit. You don't want to be driving around with a first aid kit. You want to be driving around with a trauma kit. What's the difference? This side is the first aid. This is for boo-boos and scrapes. This side is the trauma side. This is where you isolate a limb or you tourniquet something or you put something up in a sling. This will help you get off the trail and back to safety. That's what the trauma side is for. I'm not doing surgery out there. I'm just isolating an emergency and getting off the trail. So make sure you have this side of your kit. This is important, but this is really important. In my vehicle, I carry all of the appropriate recovery gear. I have a winch, I have the straps, I have kinetic rope, I have an ax, I have a saw, I have a way to jump my car if the battery dies, I have a way to blow up my tires, I have a way to fix my tires. Believe it or not, I keep all of that stuff right under here. So I've got an ax down here for kindling and stuff, whatever. I've got a samurai saw. Look at how aggressive those little teeth are. It's an ergonomic saw for one hand sawing. I have a little but appropriate sized Vi Air air pump for my tires. I can pump up each tire in about five minutes. It just hooks to the battery of your car and you can run around and blow up your tires. This is a NOCO lithium battery that jumps your car. I can jump my car maybe six times on a single charge. Underneath the front passenger seat, I keep a kinetic rope. I keep three inch strapping that can go around trees. I have about 70 feet of three inch strapping that goes to that manual winch. I also keep a Life Straw water filter kit in the car. Go look at the TED lecture on this system. You can filter the worst contaminated water and drink it. I think this makes several thousand gallons of drinkable water. It's amazing. As part of my vehicle recovery, I keep a couple of extra fluids in the vehicle. In case my brake lines get cut on the trail, I can fix them with some uh, tape and then I can fill up my brake fluid from here. I also keep uh, radiator leak stopper. These two things are just designed to limp me off the trail back to safety. And I keep them in these little neoprene black koozies so they don't rattle around when I'm driving. I also utilize this door to keep my breakfast cereal. I put them in the koozies Put them in the door. No rattling when I'm driving. When I get to a campground and I want a lot of fire, I'm still using electricity to do that. So this is a little electric fire starter. It's USB rechargeable. You just turn it on and it makes an arc. I don't know how hot that is, but I think it's as hot as lightning. <laughs> and that can light anything. And then I use these little, this little bellows to reach into the fire. It's hollow, folds up to nothing. And I just stick it away here in the back of the car when I'm not using it. So in order to cover up my windows at night, I have limo tinting. 
I don't use any reflectics. I don't set anything up at night. And the great thing about limo tinting is that you can't see in, but you can see out. So if I'm in a uh, mixed company, but I need to go to the bathroom, I open up my two doors like this. I put this cloth that I have around here. I put my toilet in there and I can have some privacy. So on the back of my Forerunner, I have these mounts. It stays like this most of the time when I'm in a city, but when I go out into the back country, I can put an extra two gallons on the back of the car. I can also put two more gallons over here and I can lock it down. This is called a Rotopax and you can lock them and walk away. These come in a water version, diesel version, or you can get a black version that's a little extra pouch to store stuff. Underneath the car I have a full-size spare. Great thing about this installation, I can still get into the back of my Forerunner. And a quick shout out to Overland Bound. Great community for uh, backcountry travel. In the back of the Forerunner on the right side, I have a couple more flashlights held in by Velcro. I have a Wii Boost, and then I have some extra storage. The Wii Boost goes up front to a uh, lighter, and then it's, it's powered by the, the lighter. And then the antenna part sneaks up through here, up like that, and then it just hides up here on top of the roof. And that gives me at least one extra boost in power. So I, I'm almost never without connection. So this Forerunner is a trail edition, which means it comes pretty well equipped for backcountry driving. I did a couple of things to make it right up there with the uh, Jeep Rubicons. I have the BF Goodrich KO2s. For all you nerds out there, it's still in the stock size, 265-70 R17. I could go up to an 85, 285, but then there's rubbing issues. And it's only an inch taller. So to compensate for that inch, I put a three and a half inch old man emu lift on the car, which you can't see because I spray painted it black. The reason I did that is because the great thing about this vehicle is that it just looks like a stock Forerunner, but it's a very well equipped Overlander and nobody would suspect that there's a full apartment inside. John, thanks for sharing your setup in your Forerunner here. Like I said earlier, just a really interesting build. Really interesting setup, lots yeah. of really interesting. I had a lot of fun doing it. I can tell, and you guys can probably tell too, just lots of thought went into it. Uh, it looks like a, a labor of love mixed with something that's very capable off-road. Yeah. That's really cool. If you'd like to learn more about John and his travels, he has an Instagram account and a YouTube channel, both called Minimalist Overlander. We'll put links to those in the video description. Thanks again for watching, guys. Thanks again, John, for you, sharing your setup, and we'll see you in the next one. See you down the road. Be sure to check out Adventure Know How, my new site, where you can gain access to a map of all of my free campsites, plus monthly bonus videos that you won't find anywhere else. Learn more at adventureknowhow.com. And for links to everything else SUV RVing related, visit suvrving.com. Links to these sites and more will be in the video description.